So now we're in chapter five, halfway through the book, trigonometric ratios. I love trig. It's my favorite subject, and I think my enthusiasm will help you figure this out. First thing you need to know is how to label the sides, and that trig ratios only works for right angle triangles. Right angle triangle has this little box here, right? 90 degrees. So we have two other angles that we have to deal with. And it's important that you understand that where you are in the triangle, what angle you're trying to solve for, makes a difference on how you label the sides. So let's say we're at this angle here, alpha. This one's beta up here. So if I'm at alpha, the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. It never changes. It's the longest side. So that one you don't have to worry about. It's the adjacent and the opposite that cause trouble. So if I'm here and I'm dealing with this one, the easiest way to remember this, well, some of you will figure out that the adjacent means it's beside it, it's adjacent too. But I always tell my students this little trick where you put your finger here, put your finger on the angle that you're dealing with. That's a really bad hand and I'm not an artist. And you'd say, okay, so if my finger is here, this has to be the adjacent side because it will say, aha, see, A and H side by side, aha. So if that's adjacent, that means this is the opposite side. Conversely, if you're dealing with angle beta here and you put your finger up here, and I say, okay, if my finger is here, this has to say aha on both sides. So that means this is the adjacent side. The hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse, and this one is the opposite. So if you can't figure that out, you're going to be in big trouble. You won't be able to do your trig ratios at all. So it's important to label the sides. It only works for right angle triangles. Important to label the sides. And then from grade 10, you should remember Sokotoa. Sokotoa. So what does Sokotoa mean? Sine, sine opposite over hypotenuse, cos adjacent over hypotenuse, tan opposite over adjacent. So sine, and you don't just write sine like this. It has to be sine of something. So let's say we're going to talk about the sine of alpha. Or most often in your textbook, you'll see theta. I'll write it above here. You could put theta. Like this. It's a circle with a line through it. Another Greek letter. Sine of alpha or theta is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is, that's the ka part, right? So we're using C-A-H, A, adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan of alpha would be opposite over adjacent, o a. Oh, uh. Now, one of the questions you may be asked on a test, I like to throw it in to see if my students are understanding what primary trig ratios are all about, is why are the primary trig ratios of sine and cosine always less than one? For instance, if I said, oh, what's the sine of 100 degrees? It's going to give me 0.984. Hmm. The sine of 32 degrees. 0.5299. It's never bigger than, it's always less than one. And the reason is that if you think about this, your hypotenuse is the largest side. So anytime you make a ratio of this to this or this to this, this being the largest one, so you're dividing by the largest number, which is going to give you an answer less than one. Now that doesn't work for tangent because tangent, the opposite over the adjacent, I could make the opposite side really long and the adjacent really short, like this. Can you see that? Yep. If I put the opposite here and the adjacent, you can see that now my O over A could be bigger than 1. And you will find that happens on your calculator. So, important that you understand why these two are always less than 1. Okay, less than 1. But tangent could be different. Now, not going to do the end thing yet till we do some solving. Reciprocal trig ratios. What's the reciprocal of this? Reciprocal means that you're dividing the other way around, right? You're doing the hypotenuse over the opposite. So the Greeks in their infinite wisdom 
made another set of reciprocal trig ratios and they gave them names. Now this is where it gets a little confusing because the sign goes to cosecant and it's CSC. Cosecant. And the cosecant of this is going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite. Now the reason they teach you this is because they think it would be easier if you to solve a ratio if your unknown is on the top. Mm. Oh, there's a lot easier ways to figure that out than learning all these reciprocal trigonometric ratios, but it's in the curriculum so we will continue. Secant of alpha would be hypotenuse over adjacent and tan goes to cotan and that would be adjacent over opposite. So this is secant and cotangent. Now you might notice that sine goes to cosecant, cos goes to secant, so they switch letters. Not sure why they did that. Why didn't they say sine and secant? I don't know. Ask the Greeks. They're not around to defend their reasoning. So those are your reciprocal trig ratios. And I'm going to give you some examples on how do you solve these things because you get lots of that practice in your, in your homework. So let's take a look now using a calculator. So let's talk about that. So calculator. So let's say I'm trying to find the cosecant of 25 degrees. You say, oh my God, what's this flipping it all? How am I going to know how I flipped it? You're not going to worry about that. What you're going to do is you're going to say that means 1 over the sine of 25 degrees because cosecant is reciprocal of sine. So you bring in your trusty calculator. You could do it all in one step. You could say 1 divided by the sine of 25 degrees. There you go, 2.366. So we'll say approximately 2.37. Now remember, this is a ratio, the ratio of the sides. This isn't degrees, this is a ratio. Another way you could do it, you could say, what's the sine of 25 degrees? And then do x to the negative 1 of your answer. And that gets you, whoops, I did a boo-boo on that one. I don't answer, answer. Okay, go back. Sine 25 degrees equals, now, x to the negative 1 of your answer, it already did it, is 2.366. So that's the same thing we got here. So that's all you have to do. It's not difficult. It's just another, another thing to learn, right? Secant, cosecant. So let's try, um, let's do the cotangent, just for another example. Let's do cotangent of um, 52 degrees. Switch the numbers around here. So the cotangent of 52 degrees is equal to, I could have put an equal sign here, never the arrow, cotan of 52 degrees is 1 over the tan of 52 degrees. I forgot the end. Okay, so back on your calculator. 1 divided by the tan of 52 degrees equals 0 0.781. Approximately equal to 0.781. Approximately equal to reason for that because you have all these decimals and you're rounding somewhere along the way. Okay, now let's look at another question that I saw in your homework here, and it says, What is the cotangent if the cotangent of theta? Well, let's go back and do a, a basic one. Let's say I told you that the sine of theta was 0 0.6214. How do you find theta? Remembering that this is your ratio. So if I want to find the degrees, I do this. I use my calculator. Remember, in your calculator, there are two things. There is the sine of it, and then above it, it has sine negative 1. So when you take the sine of 25 degrees, it's giving you a ratio. But if you do second sine, whoops, oh, I hit the wrong button. If I do second sign of the answer, it takes me back to the degrees. So one gives you the ratio, going backwards gives you the degrees. So if I had this, if I said sine 
1, 4. I would write it like this, sine negative 1 of 0.624. So second sine of 0.6214 equals, and I get degrees, 38 degrees. Now remember what I said about these being less than so approximately 38 degrees. They always are less than 1. If you tried to do sine negative 1, I'll show you what happens. Second sine of, say, 1.2. Your calculator is going to hopefully not blow up, but it does give you an error. It says quit, domain, domain error. You're using a number that doesn't have a sine value because sine is always less than 1, just like cosine. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about this N thing that I was ex telling you about. And it is the most handiest little tool to solve for ratios, which is what you have here, right? These are all ratios, opposite over hypotenuse. These are all ratios. So if I said, let's just do a really simple thing, nothing to do with trig. 3 over 5 is um, 7 over x, and I want to solve for x. The N thing says, I start with the unknown, and I have to go up or down. So in this case, I would have to go up, I go on the diagonal, and I go up again. So that means x is equal to 7 times 5 divided by 3. So it's right there. This times this divided by that. Um, let's do one where it's in a different position. So let's say um, 5 over 3 equals x over 2. And I want to solve for x. So again, you go down this time because I have to go up or down to start. So that means x is equal to 2 times 5 divided by 3, all in one step. x equals 2 times 5 over 3. So that's how you use this in order to solve all your little ratios for trigonometry. Now I want to do one from your homework that's a little tricky and it says Hmm. It says cotan theta, cotan theta equals 1.2711, and you have to solve for theta to the nearest degree. So remember that this is 1 over tangent, right? It's 1 over the tangent. So that means that the tangent, it's always easier to write it back into the principal or primary trig ratio, the tan of theta is 1 over 1.2711. So if I get out of this mistake that I did, if I do 1 divided by 1.2711, I have a new ratio, and that would be the tangent of theta. So this is 0 0.7867. And if I want to know what theta is now, I do tan inverse 0 0.7867 is approximately equal to, and all I have to do is second tan, which brings me to this other number here, right? The tan negative one of my answer, second answer equals, bam, 38, about 38 degrees, 38 degrees. So those are the types of ratios they're trying to get you to do in your homework. Re, um, flipping between cosecant, finding the angles, setting up the different ratios. So if you have any particular questions, give me a shout out below. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Or if you want to um, post a question from a homework assignment you have, feel free to do that. I'm here for you. Have a good day. Bye.